As we have seen, the Constitution gives Congress the power and the responsibility to provide for the general welfare of the nation. So important is the idea of general welfare, this is the only term that is stated twice in the Constitution, once in the preamble and again in Article I. Unfortunately, a lot of people interpret this term to be a green light for massive social security, the so-called nanny state, which pays for everything and then demands the right to regulate everything. Well, the Constitution was written to limit the size and scope of government. It was to uh, recognize that government was there to protect our liberties. It does not endorse the welfare system at all. If we just followed the Constitution, the government would be very much smaller, maybe 80% smaller. This may be the cultural Marxist's dream of a socialist state, but as a result, we now have minimum wage laws, child labor laws, federal disability laws, Medicaid laws, public housing laws, rent laws, entitlement laws, food stamp laws, and even extensive pet laws. Over 25,000 laws are enacted every year, many by congressmen that have been bought and paid for by multinational corporations, all non-people entities. I hereby declare this to be an unlawful assembly. If you remain in this immediate vicinity, you will be in violation of the Pennsylvania Crimes Code, no matter what your purpose is. What comes to mind is big corporations that put their view of the world out there for everyone, um, take over small businesses, take over um, choices that people might have, different kinds of products where everything becomes much more generic and just based on cost as opposed to quality and workmanship. Because term limits have not been established for the Congress, most congressmen have been able to stay in office for decades. Again, this is the Supreme Court. States were enacting and imposed term limits on their members of Congress uh, in something like half the American states, and the Supreme Court overthrew it and took the right away from the states to impose term limits on their own members of Congress. And what did Congress do? They said, that's fine with us because we'll stay in power. It seems the more a congressman is entrenched, the more he is able to build a social network, a network of cronies. Clearly, good relationships with fellow congressmen serve many productive purposes, but such a network can also be abused. After all, it's much easier to minimize the risks of vote swapping, a form of collusion, amongst cronies. It's much easier to justify corporate campaign contributions, a form of bribery, amongst cronies. And it's much easier to get away with earmarks, a form of fraud, amongst cronies. Thus, an entrenched Congress, especially one cast into only two major political parties, would seem to be in the perfect position to imperceptibly usurp power from the people and place it into the hands of the corporate fascists that have hijacked Congress. The right place to look for a solution to the problem of corrupt politicians is at the voter and their perception of who they're voting for and what the political principles of their candidates are. You can bet collusion, bribery, and fraud are not practices the founders envisioned for a more perfect union. So unless I have this view that I need to participate in this system as a self-governing citizen to maintain the integrity of the system, the system will eventually be dominated from the top down by the people who can actually make something from gaming it, as the expression goes. So I, this is the Founding Fathers' point. It depends upon having a virtuous citizenry that is willing to shoulder the burdens of maintaining a self-governmental structure. Again, general welfare includes everyone, especially the vast majority of average citizens who fall within the middle of the social spectrum. 
In statistical terms, the average, or mean, is represented at the top, or crest, of what's known as a bell-shaped curve. It's the middle of the bell-shaped curve. So it's fair to say that the original intent of the Constitution is to define a government that serves the general population, the middle of the bell-shaped curve, now known as the middle class. Do you sense a dwindling middle class or a wealth disparity? Well, I think things are changing right now. I think the last, uh, the last eight years have been uh, uh, increasing, increasing wealth disparity, but I think some of the excesses of those days uh, may be over. The terms spreading the wealth, redistribution, and wealth disparity are meaningless in an America that truly responds to the original intent of the Constitution. The proper function of government is not to provide, but to protect. Because if you're going to provide for some, you must have the authority and the power to take from others. And once you're in that business of taking from some and giving to others, now you're in the business of redividing the wealth. And that gives you tremendous power over, over the citizenry. And it always leads to abuse of power and eventually to totalitarian regimes. Many have commented that we now have a monstrous tax system, a system that taxes its citizens far more than citizens of the Boston Tea Party era. If two to three percent taxation justified a revolution in 1776, why doesn't 50 percent and growing justify a revolution? If a few little excise taxes on pieces of paper and tea justified open lawlessness from these rebels that we're all celebrating, why don't the myriad of incomprehensible, unavoidable, crushing taxes state, local, and federal, why don't they justify a revolution today? Our government not only taxes us at every transaction, it's in our faces at every turn, endlessly regulating what we can and cannot do. All these regulating laws and their expensive enforcement programs are turning us into a police state. policemen of the world, so instead of a government now that uh, occupies so many other countries and we have 700 bases overseas, that wouldn't happen if we had the proper size government. Over 50% of U.S. citizens now work for the government at either the federal, state, or local level. Obey your orders! Understand the orders you are taking right now are unconstitutional. Yes. Understand right now what you guys are doing here today will play effect throughout history.